everyone. Uh, my name is Brian Locke, um, and today I will be working with an ESP8266. And according to the title of this stream, I will be building an alarm clock using Arduino. Um, so, hello to everybody who's watching on YouTube and on Twitch. If you want to say hi in the chats, uh, that would be great. I have a new. Uh, a new fancy chat display system. I'm sure I can make it see-through and stuff like that. That'd probably be pretty nice. But uh, so yeah, the crowd I stream with is called Restream.io. So that's just a service where I stream to them and then they stream me to Twitch and to YouTube. And they merge the two chats in here too, which is pretty nice. So hello to uh, Michael, Stephen, Eric, and Prani. Deshak, I want to guess, is your second name, Prani. Um, yeah, if if you all want to say hi and where you're from in the chat, I thought that worked pretty well. The last day, it was nice to see people from all over the all over the world, basically. Um, yeah. So as I mentioned, I want to make a, an alarm clock using an Arduino. And because I use nearly nothing but an ESP8266, which I'm sure if you're watching my channel, you know what that is. It's an Arduino with built-in Wi-Fi, and it's about three dollars for this chip. So you know it's uh, pretty uh, pretty cheap. Um, yeah, so I'm going to build a Wi-Fi alarm clock. And what good is a Wi-Fi alarm clock? Well, there's a couple of interesting things that we could maybe do with it. So. First of all, uh, rather than set the time, I see YouTube saying that my, oh no, that's fine. Is it, is the stream okay on YouTube? It looks fine in the preview, if you could let me know. Um, if you could let me know if it's, uh, if it's okay. I, I think it's just, it's expecting the stream to be 1080 on YouTube and it's only 720. I can probably bump it up to 1080. I might try that the next time or do a couple of private tests. Um, because I think the internet should be able for it, but that's okay. Um, yeah, so um, yeah, so a couple of cool things. So rather than set the time um, ourselves, we'll fetch the time from the internet using something called NTP. I can't remember what N stands for, but I think it's something time protocol and uh, network time protocol probably and uh, yeah so rather than set the time or keep the time we'll let the NTP server do that uh, you're not seeing any movement on screen how about now uh, I haven't been moving too much can you see me moving on the screen I presume I'm on YouTube it's okay cool uh, awesome uh, let me know if you need me to try make the the chat a bit bigger as well um, yeah it's my first time playing around with putting the chat in the stream just to see what it's like and uh, yeah the other thing that might be kind of useful is you know setting the alarms from your phone or whatever so you don't need to uh, mess around with uh, with buttons on the alarm clock you know have a nice little web interface to do it and then I was thinking of maybe some other things that you could do like you could make the alarm be smart um, say for example these um these cold mornings um if you you could check the weather and if it's below zero you might set the alarm for 10 minutes earlier because you're going to need to get up and defrost your car or maybe another example would be uh you know we could use the google maps api um use the google maps api and uh check the travel time to work and uh, if it's significantly worse you could adjust the alarm clock again so a couple of interesting things that maybe you could do with it um so yeah let's uh talk less and uh do more so hello to eugene from canada mo from germany stephen from the uk uh sore from i think it's sore from finland in Tin Loom from South Africa uh, and then Donald from Ireland huh. 
yeah, I'm not too sure. If uh, anybody else sees any problems uh, with the stream, uh, please let me know. But it seems to be not working great for Stephen. Um, okay, let's get into it. So, as per usual, I'm using... Uh, hello... Uh, let's make the entire room a light. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a cool idea as well. So, dr drone on the YouTube chat, which you can see on the screen now, is saying that you could control like the lights in your room to make your entire room a light up. That's actually a nice idea. Uh, I don't have a Philips Hue, but I, I could uh, probably buy a cheap Chinese one or whatever. I'm all into knockoffs. Uh, speaking of knockoffs, this is a knockoff Wemos D1 Mini. So I have a link to that in the description. I have a link to the breadboard and I have a link to this module here, which is a 60 or 70 cent uh, seven segment display. Um, so what's pretty nice about it is it only has uh, four input wires um, and so it looks after whatever multiplexing it needs to do so you just send down the figures or the digits to it and it looks after it so i've actually um used this module before in the google maps um uh in the google maps uh AP or sorry the commute checker uh, project that I did so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up the code from that and uh, get going yeah I think there will be a delay in the chat all right um Prani like I, I even noticed that in uh in this uh you can't see that um <laughs> what I'm hovering over that uh, thing above my head um yeah, when I chat or when I type into the chat, I even see a delay in it. So, like, you'll even see it worse because it has to stream from there to you then. So, um, yeah. So, let's take a look at that project. I have a million of those restream chats open. Perfect. <laughs> uh, let's just get that one out of the way. I probably need to keep that one open, seeing as it's the one. Okay. So how has everyone's week been? Um, I actually did some Arduino development for the first time in ages. Like I, I used to do a lot with libraries and APIs and stuff. And I, just with my last few projects, I, I haven't barely done any development whatsoever. So it was kind of nice to get back into it. So I did, um, I did the, an API for Instagram, um, so office desktop i guess that's it hmm probably don't need to show what's on the screen at the moment yeah this will probably do um yeah so it just goes and fetches the amount of instagram subscribers that you have i don't sorry i now have an instagram account to literally test that out i think i have six followers go me um so yeah that seems to be working pretty well um i published it to um i published to the, to the arduino library manager but it hasn't been um it hasn't been approved yet or at least i haven't heard anything from it so um yeah okay so if you haven't seen this project before Let's see what editing and instructables looks like. So it was just a thing that checked three different routes on the way home from work for one of my friends. And uh, so there's a route here that's lit up and there's a route here. And then there's a route that goes up behind fastest as well. And then you can see the seven segment display here. So I used that as both to show how long this route was taken, but also in between I was shown the time. Um, uh, yeah, so can we use Node MCU for this project? The the Node MCU and the Wemos are like identical. The pins are the same, everything. So, you know, you even in the Arduino IDE, you can keep the board selected as one or the other. So it really won't make any difference if we use a Node MCU or a, a Wemos for this. Like literally, you, you won't be making any changes to it. Um, so the reason I prefer the D1 is just because it's smaller. Um, how would you do a traffic counter for a street? Is that like count the amount of traffic there is or? 
I, I don't quite fully get you. Radar. Uh, I, I don't really know what you mean. Did you mean how did I get the traffic? I was just getting it from Google Google Maps. So I was uh, I was nice to myself. I labeled what uh, this four digit seven segment was. It's a TM1637 driver with the four digit seven segment display. And um, yeah, so I also was pretty nice to myself. I uh, did the um, did a link to where the library was. So this one doesn't seem to be on the library manager, so I'm going to need to go get it. Well, I suppose I better launch the Arduino ID. I might just happen to have it still. I kind of changed the Arduino ID a lot, like updated and stuff. So like the one I did this project on is quite possibly not the one I still use now. I, I also used to do a good bit more work on my Mac. Uh, I don't do as much of it anymore. Let's see, what was that thing called? Uh, I don't see it. What was it called? TM1637. Yeah, I don't think that's there. Um, sketch include library. Yeah, I don't see it. Okay, cool. So let's uh, let's grab it. So, and also here's the NTP client that I used. So I'll grab that too. Um, all right. So let's download this. So uh, you can't really see it, but I'm just gonna click this clone or download button and then click download zip. Do, 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 do. Uh, yeah, count the cars. Yeah, I don't know how you do that. There, there's a lot of um, a lot of cities and stuff now. You know, are trying to promote kind of being smart cities and things like that. So, like, it's even possible that some things would like expose APIs to what the traffic is like um, in places. Like, I know, um, I know Dublin has a lot of that kind of smart city initiatives here in Ireland and Barcelona in Spain so yeah I, I don't know maybe you can kind of get traffic off them so hello to anyone else who's joined um, okay cool so that's downloaded uh, yeah so I was using the Google Maps API I think I'm not fully sure but I think a huge way or a big way that they figure out what the traffic is like is based on people's Android phones who have data on and how fast or slow that they're moving. So, ugh, oops. So I guess we're trying to get that to speed up. Um, yeah. So sorry if there is a bit of a delay with me responding to um, responding to chats because I'm just keeping an eye on it in that. Uh, yeah, in the in the window up there. Um, okay, so I'm gonna add a zip to library. Probably should have done this off screen, but sure. Or not off screen, but before I started a stream, so. Oh well. Uh, let's see, recent items. Do we have downloads here? I don't see downloads. Documents. Users. Downloads. What was it called? TM1637. Okay. Right, that's that installed. So I guess we may as well start with getting that working. Um, so I may as well use the same wiring that I did here if I uh, if I left that for myself. Yep. So D6 and D5. So. Let's just switch quickly over to desk plus chat plus me. All right, so we're using D6 and D5. So, and we'll use 3.3 .3 volts as well and ground. So I'm gonna use a, a male to female wire um, just so I can keep the seven segments uh, display pointing upwards so you can see it. And I might use a little bit of blue tech to keep it level and because there's a big chip on the back of it that is kind of rocking it so 
Uh, blue tech. Is there anything it can't do? I actually do use it for absolutely everything. It's just so handy. Right. Before I get into this, I should probably not cover up what the pins are. So, okay. Let's go green is ground. Uh, let me don't know if I'm talking too quiet. I kind of kind of tired so I feel like I'm talking a little bit quiet okay so green we're going with ground VCC is this blue wire which is perfect for VCC and we have DIO is this purple wire and then gray is clock so um, according to my code from that last project I had D6 as clock so gray was d6 and then d5 was uh, dio okay as far as i move this up here so d6 and d5 and then blue was vcc and green was ground so i'm going to plug into 3.3 uh, volts which is up the top here then ground which is down the bottom so as we plug in more stuff I, I'll probably have to use the the power bars or whatever um yeah so uh, 97 Glorgus was asking about the range of these um, boards I actually find that they're pretty good uh, I haven't had any issues with them now the, the Wi-Fi router I have in my house is uh, super good uh it's one called microtech and it's like really powerful like even you know nearly out on my road i can still get my wi-fi so um that probably helps a lot i did buy uh i did buy one of the ones that has an external antenna somewhere in here i don't know where i put it there it is um this is the wemos pro uh, D1 Mini Pro. I literally have not used this once yet. Um, and, you know, I bought one of those adapters that you'd plug in those kind of standard kind of screw terminals that you'd have on the back of the back of uh, routers. Um, yeah, I, I haven't had any problem with it. Um, hey, Drew, how's it going? Good to see you back. He's on the Twitch chat. Um, yeah, no, I, I I really like the Microtech. It's not it's not the simplest router to use. It's a little bit complicated, but it's it's so powerful. It's it's crazy how uh, how much stuff you can do with it. Now, one thing I do is uh, one thing that I normally do before I start a stream is make sure I can program the board, and I didn't do that this time. So <laughs> let's uh, let's hope that works okay. Uh, okay, so back to the desktop. Uh, <laughs> I hope you didn't call in sick just to see my stream. Uh, hope you're feeling better soon, Drew. Um, do I do anything to flash the boards before you start using them? No, uh, other than uh, set up the... Once you have the drivers set up and your Arduino environment set up, um, no, don't do anything. Just uh, plug, the, plug them in and program them. So uh, let's start a new project, I suppose. And before we go anywhere else, let's um, let's save it. Okay. And somebody I think mentioned in the last one as well that it was a bit um, it's a bit small. So let's bump that up. Okay. So let me know if that is better. Um, okay. I'm just gonna save this as. Alarm clock, and I'll I'll throw this up on GitHub afterwards. Um, yeah, so like if I was flashing a board for the first time, not just if I got another Wemos D1 Mini, I I probably wouldn't bother just flash it. But I, I guess it's probably good practice to flash it just to make sure it's working okay. But um, definitely, if I was trying out a board for the first time, the first thing I want to do is get a blink sketch on it. Like, you know, if I, when I was programming the at tiny, the first thing I wanted to do was blink sketch because, you know, it just makes sure that it's actually working okay for you. Um, 
I don't know what to do with the chat and the overhead uh, here. I I'll hide one as I need to. Um, I we don't really need the overhead at the moment. Um, okay, so alarm clock. I probably should have uh, grabbed my example first. So I'm hoping that the TTM17, okay, this has an example code. So let's, uh, let's flash that first. Um, and I'll take these pins on the sample sketch. Here, now I need to resist the urge to control S. Um, so Greg, I so Greg is asking, are the white ones? Oh, I'm sorry, you can't see the white ones because the chat's in the way. Uh, Greg was asking, are the whiteboards as good as the clear ones? And I don't know. <laughs> I've never bought the white ones, and they are. They're significantly cheaper. Like there's well, there's like thirty cent in the difference, but you know, it's a good percentage of the price of it is the is the difference between them. Because yeah, I was I'm I'm working on I mentioned it in the last stream about that kind of starter starter project. I started compiling the list of stuff that um I started compiling the list of stuff that I'd want to include in that. Uh, I'll show it to you here. You can um let me know what you think about it. Um so as I mentioned I'm gonna go with the node MCU uh board, the small one that fits in the breadboard. And then like soil moisture, a PIR sensor, the small OLED, the, this force digit segment, seven segment that we're using, an LDR module, just because I couldn't find uh, small packets of LDRs, uh, a buzzer module, which I'll also probably be using, um, and then a distance sensor. So like the total cost of all that is like $12 or something like that. So um, it should be, uh, okay, so this, Failed. Why did it fail? Uh, it might have just failed. Let's see. I really hope I can program this or I'll have to restart the stream. <laughs> One of the first streams I did, I, I wasn't able to program the board. Uh, that's uploading there. Um, so I needed to restart the stream and I wasn't doing YouTube events either. So, like, it didn't combine into one, um, it didn't combine into one, um, one, uh, stream. So I ended up having, like, four streams or something. Uh, so, this is not ideal, but, um, yeah, so you can see it's going through its different bits and pieces here. It's just displaying random numbers and zeroing it out and doing whatever it's doing so you can see it's working there it it looks much better in person <laughs> than it does on camera i think it's because of this light so yeah you can see there it's um a good bit better when i turn off the lights but uh, it's harder to see the desk when i turn off the lights so i'll turn them back on maybe i don't need them as bright though pretty bright okay um we might be able to bump up the brightness as well i thought there was yeah so if zero f is that bright maybe ff is really bright i don't, I don't know let's find out okay let me bring back up the chat because i'm missing all the chats uh yeah so there uh, the Robodin ones that I have are these generic ones. Um, or sorry, the Robodins I have are these transparent ones. Um, but you can get Robodin white ones. I just don't have any. Um, I wanted to keep keep it so that like I know that if I'm picking up a translucent one, it's a Robodin one. Um, but I would say that they're the same. I'd hope they're the same. Um, yeah, because they, they are definitely worth the extra. Uh, Drew is asking why I do the prices in dollars, because I buy everything from China and they sell it to me in dollars. So that's pretty much why I do it in dollars. 
and also uh, 20% of my audience are from the United States and something like another 10% are from Canada so people feel more at home with dollars although we have different dollars than uh, the Canadians um, yeah so no I've nearly always quoted prices in dollars just for that reason um, okay so I think that is a bit brighter um, it looks it looks okay so that, that's fine so let's uh, let's move on from that um, there isn't really a huge amount of points reinventing the wheel in terms of the code I use to put the time on the clock but let's get the NTP server up and running I need to install that library Yeah, there's one thing I'll I'll probably try to figure this out off stream because it would be super boring. Um, I'm not a hundred percent sure what the story is with uh, daylight savings time. I just want to double check that I have the right one. So NTP client, um, because I like. I remember in that last sketch, I had to set an offset for the time. But I, I don't know how that would, you know, figure out with daylight savings time because, you know, I'm, where I am isn't GMT, it's GMT sometimes, <laughs> but um, it's, uh, it's GMT sometimes, but uh, not all the time. <laughs> During the summer, I think it's IST, International Summer Time or whatever it is, so it's GMT plus one. So, yeah, I don't I don't know what the story is with that. So we, I I'll, I think I'll figure that out off camera because there's no there's no point uh, spending time figuring that out here. I, I would say. So let's look at the NTP server. Does it not have any examples? I installed it. TTP. No. Maybe it doesn't have it. Oh, there it is. NTP client. What's that doing up there? Uh, so let's presume basic is uh, is the one to go with. Ooh, I need to put in my password. Right, let me take you off screen for a second. Irrational summertime. Yeah, probably. You all have daylight savings as well, right? Um. Hey to make me and Martin and thanks for joining the crew Drew moving over to uh, uh, Yeah, thanks for joining the crew over to YouTube um, right, Let me get this my, uh, Yeah, I don't yeah, I just need to get my um just need to get the um what the SSID. So I have two Wi-Fi's in my house. The one that I stream on is um has its own Wi-Fi, and I can never remember the SSID of it. So I'm just logging into my uh, logging into my router now to get a handy way of copying and pasting the SSID in. And yes. Yeah, so you find the program NTP tool, you can see all the fields you usually get. Usually it's UTC. Yeah, what I what I didn't understand is like how, you know, so whatever date it is, it's like the last Sunday in March, we moved the clocks forward, back, fall back, spring forward. So we move it forward. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I don't understand how they would, how the Arduino would know to uh, to get rid of it, or sorry, to change the time at that stage, because you know you still have the same offset in your code, and because it's like the last Sunday of you know March, you, you can't just say on March thirty first change that to be that like is in. So <laughs> I I don't know exactly how you fix that. Um. Hey, Burton. Um. I haven't used it. Did you message me on Reddit there last night? Sorry, I didn't. If it was you, I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to reply. I haven't used it at all. I've 
done very little Bluetooth projects uh, with the Arduino. Um, yes, Sora, I hope they do get rid of it. <laughs> um, there, we like where I work. We work with. Um, I'm just sorry. I'm just compiling the sketch off screen here um, just to get my SSID up on it. Um, we work with um, people from the US and like there's a couple of weeks where it's just madness where you know we've moved forward or that we've moved back and they haven't and just the time zones are all messed up and it's just if meetings were organized here they're now like super early for them and if they were organized there it could be super late for us so it's a bit of a mess so I hope to get rid of it. Hey Shine Vision, how is it going? <laughs> Just because the US has it doesn't mean it's rational. True. And hey to Will. And I'm drinking almost cold tea at this stage. So now let me just get rid of this Wi Fi line and oh, sugar. And oh. One second now. Okay, so now, so that's uploaded. If we look at the serial monitor, it's showing the time, and it's right. So I'm. It's it's currently coming back as GMT, but during the summer I would need to offset this by one. Um. <laughs> yeah, so. <sore. laughs> Can we have different uh, different time zones? Yeah, maybe. It's actually it's a it's a big pain if you're trying to advertise like a stream because you're like, hey, this stream starts at nine thirty in Ireland and where whatever everywhere else. So I just started making the events and be like, yeah, here's the stream is starting at some stage. Just here, figured out. <laughs> um, Okay, so that's the time. So uh, now what we just need to do is combine this with uh, this, and we should. Uh... Yeah. So um, wh what I find funny, and I don't know if you'd find the same, Stephen. If I asked someone, like you know, someone I worked with or whatever, if I said what time zone are we in, they would say GMT, and that's not technically true and it's definitely not true in the summertime so like i was advertising a stream and i was like gmt it starts at five or whatever and then if you're in paris you know central european time it starts at six and he was like but gmt in paris is two hours apart at the moment and i was like don't worry about it <laughs> uh yeah stream starts in x hours when this post is 20 hours old the stream will have started it's probably not a bad idea um okay so i did some work to convert the the time into something to put on that um to put on that display let me just find that seg done let's go down to the loop here so this is back to the arduino or the travel time um, so Firewriter was saying, do I intend to use a real-time clock for situations without Wi-Fi? That is a good question. Um, one second. This is my uh, box of tricks. Let me just move stuff out of the way. Um, it's in my lovely uh, frozen loom bands box that I literally bought for the box, which I said on a stream before, I think. Um, so I have some of those modules. So this is, you put a coin cell battery in it, and when you set the time, it'll keep the time. Um, and that is, so that, that would make a good backup, and it might be something I'll add to the project in a bit. I'm not gonna do it at the moment. Um, if the Wi-Fi goes down, it should, I think the library keeps time and you can tell it how often you want to um how often you want it to go back and find you know time off the network if i want to better stand up with the, just put it on the floor uh you can go yeah you can find out um or sorry you can uh, where are my desktop 
excuse me, you can, where is it, basic, um, yeah, so this is, I think, getting the time, like, all the time, but if you look at the advanced settings of it, um, examples, NTP, advanced, um, you can set stuff, like, yeah, so that, So see the set update interval. So this is the last one here. So this is saying time in milliseconds. So a thousand will be a second. So I think this is only updating every like, is it hour? If I'm reading that right. So a thousand. Uh, yeah, that's every. Oh, no, it's every minute. Is it 60,000? And if it was a thousand, it'd be a second. So sixty thousand would be sixty seconds. Uh, yep. Um. So that would be fine, I think. Like you know, so if the Wi-Fi goes, it'll still work. But I think if yeah, ideally you'd probably want to have a, a battery backup or whatever. So uh, cool. Uh, coin cell is only if you want to retain the time across power outs, otherwise it'll just work fine without the VBAT. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I've actually decided that I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to buy anything off AliExpress for a while. I just have so much stuff to get through. Um, so, yep. <laughs> uh, alright. Night, Stephen. I know it's a little bit late for streams, but it's even later for our European friends. Uh, yeah, so... We'll, we'll look into that in more detail in a bit now too, but uh, okay, so display change time, time client update and display state equals one. Cool. What is this display state? Okay, display time. So it's getting epoch time from time client. I think I found after this that I could have done this a different way. Um, the AliExpress diet. Yeah, no, it's just um, uh, we're talking about like you know starting to save money or whatever now after the wedding and uh, yeah, and just yeah, I I like literally have so much stuff. Like I've tons of projects I could do without buying any anything. So I'm just gonna try get through some of them rather than buying stuff but i keep i keep seeing stuff that i want though even still like uh he can't see my super chat oh did you send me a super chat uh oh thanks a lot hidden <laughs> uh wow i never uh i never got one of those before uh, thank you so Aiden sent me one pound, so you can fund my uh, next AliExpress purchase. So uh, <laughs> thanks a lot. So yeah, Gary in the chat is actually a friend of mine as well. He's um, he's a moderator, so if any uh, if any um, step out of line, Gary will uh, sort you out. Um, yeah. So thanks for that. I wasn't expecting that at all. Um, Okay, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure there was an easier way of doing this, but for the moment, again, I might look into that after afterwards, but so what this is doing is it's getting the epoch time, which is the amount of seconds since the 1st of January 1970 or whatever that date is, and so it's getting the remainder of this number, which when you divide it by 3,600 gives you the hour, uh, the time hour it is. And uh, yeah, similar enough with the minutes then. I can't remember where I found this, but it seems to work fine anyways. We'll, uh, we'll look after it in a bit. And then I'm just uh, displaying the, the clock on each digit. So I'm defining this uh, data array of ints so the first one is the is the first digit um this guy over here so if it's less than if the hour is less than 10 i'm going to put a zero in it and uh <laughs> i'm here saving up money to send to lamore <laughs> so that's uh that's uh, adafruit if anybody is uh wondering what the story is with that 
I should probably stop reading the YouTube chat now because I'm reading it faster than it comes in on this thing, which might freak people out. Um, yeah, so data one is this first one. So if it's less than 10, I'm just going to put a zero in here. And if it's greater than 10, I'll put whatever digit it is, which is either a one or a two. And then um, the the else here is, sorry, the else here is the second digit and so on. So turn on dots was, uh, you just need to uh, append. So there's one extra digit to turn on. There's like two dots in between here, you know, that would normally represent telling the time or whatever. So to turn that on, you just need to set this bit. So what I'm doing is I'm taking whatever data is in, uh, that I've already set for one and I'm ending it with this bit here. So um, like the numbers that can be in one already, sorry, I keep po pointing at the wrong screen, um, are, uh, you know, look, are already looked after in, in these digits. And then, so I'm, sorry, I'm not ending it, I'm oring it. So whatever they were before, they're gonna stay that way. And then I'm also setting this bit then as well. So that'll turn on the dots. And uh, then I'm doing something similar then for the minutes, and then I set the display. So let's uh, let's grab that. I think we're gonna gonna need it. I'll go to our alarm clock sketch. I'll throw that in there. And uh, what else will we grab? We'll grab this basic sketch, I suppose. Why not? We'll throw that in uh, alarm clock. Um, I was saying before about probably missing out on the the February twentieth deadline for um, you know, the YouTube monetization. I'm actually not sure if I will miss out on it anymore. Um, I'm like. 20,000 minutes away or something, which, you know, in, in 20 days, I, I probably will get. So, uh, thanks to everybody who was watching, uh, watching the videos over the last while. I think the live stream helped uh, a huge bit having a good crowd on it the last day. So that was, uh, that was great. Thank you. Let me see. I have, uh, so like total view times so far has been 23 hours. So, you know, it's kind of, it adds up. Um, yeah, LGB Kai, we were talking about that uh, RTC that um, I probably will add one as a backup or whatever, but um, for the moment, I, uh, I will probably, I'll just get the Wi-Fi part working first. So we can keep, uh, we can keep adding to this uh, project as we go on. So let me find out what I did to set up this uh, seven segment display. I probably didn't do a huge amount. Uh, here, let's grab this, so this is just initializing the display, and I need to get my uh, pin definitions, and uh, I absolutely hate retyping out anything, so I'll copy and paste even two lines if I uh, can. <laughs> Why not? Okay, no. So let's look at the setup. I'm sure I do something with the display, do I? In the setup? Not really, I set the brightness. so I'll set the brightness and again that's something that we could make um, configurable using the web interface or whatever um, yeah um, yeah that's uh, that's me as well LGB Kai software developer trying to be a, a hobbyist electronic person so um, yeah uh, where am I? I'm lost. Where do we know? Commute checker. I should probably add serial as well. Um, okay. Let me go back to this example here. 
So I have it initialized and then all I need to do is probably call the time stuff now. Yeah, I think I think that's it. Um let's see basic I need to get the time. Time find that begin. Uh it should be on Twitch make me. Uh, the channel is is Brian Locke. Uh, it's here. I've got two viewers. Hello to them, whoever you are. I think I stole all the viewers over to uh, YouTube. Um, yeah, uh, that'd be cool. Uh, yeah, it's a it's a really nice uh, idea with the Discord server. If if you don't know, um, Make Me Lab. Uh, you can probably guess by his icon is a uh, is a YouTuber and he has a uh, Discord uh, channel um, that uh, people talk about different projects on and stuff. It's uh, it's really real nice. Um, it's a really nice idea. Um, I don't have Discord open at the moment, so uh, uh, I don't have Discord open at the moment because I um, <laughs> I have a bug with this microphone that if I if it gets unplugged um, if it gets unplugged while I'm uh, when I'm on Discord, it like crashes my computer, so I just close Discord when I, I don't need it. Um, thanks, Make Me. That'd be uh, great. I didn't get dressed up for the stream, Matt. I got dressed up for work, and I didn't get undressed um, <laughs> since work. Uh, yeah. No. Let me get back to actually doing some work. Um, actually, I'm way too warm at the moment too, so uh, that's that's great. <laughs> I'm regretting being dressed up. Uh, okay, I need to grab most of this stuff, right? I'm so lost at the moment. Okay, I already have a lot of it. NTP client. Okay, so I need the Wi-Fi code from it. So just the basic Wi-Fi code. Uh, I the reason I begin um, Wi-Fi begin commented out because the Arduino will automatically do that for you. Um, it'll connect using the last known details. I think I was mentioning this on the last uh, stream I did with code. And um, so because I don't want to show you my password, I am letting it connect to the last known details rather than the ones in the sketch. Um, yeah. I don't know. It seems to be the done thing on Twitch is to, to be in less of a state of dress than I'm in, to put it that way, which is kind of a weird way to put it, but anyways. Uh, okay. So I'm just, yeah, I'm adding in the Wi-Fi. So this should connect. It should begin the time server. Let's grab how, like, this can display time. What is this doing? So time client dot epoch. So that should be, yeah, okay, that should be fine. So now if I, you should never delay. Uh, in ESP world, but uh, you should when you want to do something quick. <laughs> um, one of those Twitch viewers is restream if I see that correctly. Uh, yeah, that's probably true because it needs to find out the um, it needs to find out the uh, ch like it's displaying all the chat stuff in here. Um, all right, see a drone. Uh, yeah, nor. NL, I presume, is Netherlands. Um, yeah, so it's probably pretty late there. Thanks for thanks for joining. Uh, Aiden, how long have we been streaming? Is that today or uh, in general? Um, uh, I I started streaming maybe like last June or something. I've I've only done maybe like six or seven streams, maybe a little bit more. Um, but um. Yeah, uh, so originally I couldn't stream at home because my um, because my internet wasn't good enough. Um, but I'm after getting um, mobile broadband. Uh, it's with Tree actually. I presume if if you paid me in pound, you're probably English. Um, or sorry, not English, British. Um, so I didn't include this. Um not be bad news bears uh probably yeah uh let me 
just pull in this library. I don't know, let me just grab it from over here. Um, yeah, so like they have an unlimited phone plan that's like 20 euro a month for pay as you go. And I got one of those and put it in a router. And uh, yeah, I get way better internet from that than my phone line. So uh, that's why I, uh, that is why I am, um, that is why I'm now able to stream at home. So I'm thinking I might make it a, uh, uh, I think I might make it a weekly thing. Um, maybe it'd be nice to even do a little bit more. Um, especially say like I did work on that. Um, I did work on that Instagram library there. You know, last Thursday, and that probably would have made a an okay stream. I didn't realize I was going to do it until like. Uh, we were playing some PUBG, myself and Gary, and then, like, I signed off, and I was like, I don't want to go to bed just yet, so I was like, oh, I'll look at the Instagram thing for, like, a couple of minutes, and, like, three hours later, I was still working on it, so, yeah, welcome to, welcome to my life, <laughs> um, yeah, so, uh, that, that probably would have been okay, I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't stream that on YouTube, I would have just done that on Twitch, like, it's fine for, like, a project or whatever to do it on YouTube, I think, but I think, like, my channel feed would start getting a little bit messy if it was just, like, hey, watch me mess around with this thing for a few hours, um, so, yeah, I think there's only some stuff, uh, that is a good candidate for streaming on YouTube or whatever, I don't know, make me, uh, I see you do some streams later, have you kind of had any thoughts around that, like as in, you know, even some people were saying like the mailbag video being a hundred minutes long is just not approachable for somebody looking at the VOD or whatever, it was okay for the stream, but uh, yeah, um, yeah. I'd, I'd imagine there's probably a lot of Arduino programmers in Germany. I don't know any of them, but uh, what's my favorite programming language? Um, probably JavaScript, like uh, Node.js or whatever. Um, I'm doing some TypeScript in in work at the moment. That's that's pretty nice. Um, yeah, probably that. I I'm a big fan of getting things done like as fast as possible. Um. You know, so I, I know there's a lot of issues working with JavaScript and, you know, there's a lot of reasons why it's not a good thing. So this isn't working. <laughs> this is showing all zeros at the moment. Uh, but maybe, oh, it's changed to be a one. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> uh, we'll figure out what's wrong with that now. Get epoch time. Oh, I'm displaying time, but I'm never actually fetching the time. So that's probably what's wrong with that. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, but I, I absolutely love how you know with something like Node.js, you can you can build kind of projects so quick, um, so quick in like you know just kind of pulling in libraries or whatever. And that is a problem with Node.js as well, pulling in all the different libraries. Uh, but um, like, I have, uh, I don't know if any use Telegram, but um, I have a, a bot that I made on Telegram that um, what it does is it goes to Reddit or soccer and um, finds the goals that uh, I figure are from Premier League teams and it posts them into a channel. And I had the idea for this. Somebody told me about Telegram and bots and stuff. And I was like, oh, this would make a cool bot. Because I was going to... Um, I was going to um, Reddit just to find these goals. Like, And uh, even when one of, the, one of the guys was in the States, like, I was sending them to him. So I was like, wouldn't it be cool if you had the bot to do it? And, like, in the end... So what the bot did was it was integrating with Telegram... It was going to Reddit and going to Or Soccer and parsing out things that I assumed were goals based on the names of it and, and stuff like that. And then um, it was storing the goals in Firebase, like links to the goals, so that if like the bot restarted and it went to Reddit and saw them again, it would know, oh, I already have this because I stored it in Firebase. And the whole thing was like 50 lines of code or something, and I wrote it in like a few hours. And I was just like, wow, this is crazy. And then 
the the other thing with it was so this uh oh i only saved it <laughs> um let me compile it there and, and then like the whole thing was um yeah so i was like oh knock this out this would be cool i'll just throw it out there and s see what happens and like now it has like i don't know nearly two thousand people in that channel i've barely changed it at all since uh since i did that so it's a uh, I, I like that aspect of it, so let me just click the upload button again. Uh, Drew, I've never played Fortnite. No, I just uh, PUBG for life, homie. Um, yeah, I, I don't know, Gary. Why haven't we played Fortnite? I think we were just supporting the original. It seems a little bit floaty. Um, I don't. I don't know though. I have. I haven't really played it. Or oh, sorry, I haven't played it at all, and I haven't really watched it either. So I don't know. Do you like it, Drew? Or I tried to get us to play it recently. PUBG was <laughs> the chosen one, though. Yeah. Um. Cool. So let's see. Done uploading. Right. Cool. I don't know if you can see that. Let's bring you to uh, desk plus chat plus me. So that is displaying 22:28, which is the time here in ireland so cool that is the first part of this done and it only took what like it only took us an hour and a half um hey thirsty um yeah that, that was another idea it was like if you had a coffee uh, <laughs> uh if you had a uh, if you had a coffee machine that you could text or whatever message you could get it to make you coffee um we did that i i did that mod once before i broke a friend of mine's coffee machine uh doing that mod at one stage and that was quite a nice coffee machine i'm sorry kieran if you're watching um yeah um so like to be honest I, I don't know if you've missed a huge amount no thirsty so far well, we've just gotten the clock working and it's pretty scrappy bits of code um so uh yeah what would we do next what well, yeah i guess if like if i did another half an hour of a stream what would people want to see uh next <laughs> there is kieran how's it going what happens when you power it off now so when I power it off, it's going to turn off, and then when I plug it back in, it's going to connect to the Wi-Fi and go back to the NTP server and pull back the right time again. Um, I'm probably pulling down the time too much to split that time client that update, but sure, who cares. Um, oh yeah, there's some... Uh, there's other game modes in uh, in Fortnite than Battle Royale. I uh, forgot about that. <laughs> hey, uh, yeah, Greg, you're in uh, New Zealand. Yep, literally the opposite side of the world. Um, yeah, that that was weird about the Dave Jones videos as well. He was like, oh yeah, they'll be released eight o'clock Sydney time, and there were you know, like it was eight o'clock the next day so you know if he now he didn't tell me when the videos were released but you know he was saying oh they're gonna start on monday the whatever and you know they started on uh they started on the sunday for us because we're just in the past or basically um yeah so um okay cool does anyone have uh suggestions what to do for the next uh bit what features we could add we could uh we could look at um we could look at maybe setting the time zone or the offset using a web page or something um also i guess we could you know look about setting up this buzzer as well so you know that could be the start of our alarm so you saw in the post bag the last day that i i got this buzzer so yeah sure why don't we just set that up so we uh, get an alarm going. I think it was uh, Make and Me that was saying that this would be uh, good for. Um, gonna have to do some adjustments actually. Uh, so let's plug it out. 
what happens if it can't connect to the Wi-Fi after power on? Uh, it will not display the time at the moment. Um, so that is, uh, I was kind of showing a, a, a module earlier there that um, that you can use to keep time even when like power is off or whatever. Uh, flash the colon at a second rate, that's not a bad idea. Uh, yeah, because it, it's a bit static at the moment, all right. Um, make seven segment display blank 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 when it's hunting for NTP. Yeah, let's let's do that. Um, we'll get back to the buzzer now in a second because I know I can do that part because I already have it done from the uh, from the thing earlier. Sleep mode for lazy people. That uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to try avoid, I don't think I'm going to program in a sleep mode into this alarm clock. Uh, yeah. So, I, I don't know if I was just doing it wrong or whatever, but uh, like to figure out how to display which, um, which segment. So, uh, that's the best way of pointing at this. I think if, let me show you my screen. I don't know the best way of doing this now, but um, yeah, I think that this is segment A, segment B, segment C, segment D, segment E, segment F, segment G, I think, so, sorry, that middle one is G, so, like, when I was doing it before, um, like, so I was displaying, you know, num or digits up on screen or whatever, so, boot so that looked like a T kind of um, so yeah that um, I, I was like manually doing these out by hand just to figure out what to display so um, yeah I guess we can uh, we can display that um, yeah so the reason I don't want sleep mode is because I use sleep too much I don't, I don't want sleep uh, well, I do. That's the problem. Um, so I was thinking, like, you know, you could do stuff like, you know, to turn off the alarm. You could even put a button, like, the down in the kitchen or whatever. And, uh, yeah, so uh, th that might be interesting. Or maybe, like, you have to solve a couple of maths questions on your phone or something to, like, you know, make sure you're awake. Might be kind of fun. So uh, let's display a seg boot um, on the screen while it's booting up. Uh, where do I do that? Display, 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 display. Where is it? It's all not in the setup. Here's the setup. Seg boot. So yeah, I've defined all the seven segment things here and so I'm making up the word boot kind of the T doesn't look super like a T but it'll uh, it'll uh, it'll do so let's uh, let's plug that back in and upload it and we should have a boot uh, let's see what else do we have here um, if I ever have to figure out segment IDs, it'll be too soon. Yep, I I remember absolutely hating that part of it too. Um, LGBTQ, will you put the code on GitHub? Yeah, everything I do goes up on on my GitHub. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll definitely throw this up. Uh, I'll just call it like Arduino alarm clock or something. I, I won't waste your time by putting it up now, but as soon as the stream will end, I will. Um, how do you handle daylight savings time when I see sub TX in? Is it already handled by the NTP? So it isn't, and I don't know exactly how I'm going to handle that yet. Um, so what the NTP server will return you is basically what GMT is, or UTC. Um, so you need to tell it what offset you are at to tell the right time. Oops. I didn't work uploading to IO board. Um, and uh, yeah, so I have to figure out what I'm going to do with that. I'm sure I'll figure something. Um, 
the and then Aiden was sent as the ESP. It it depends on what the image is, but yeah, Drew is right. I think the smallest variant has. I think the smallest one is five twelve k. That's the little module, one. Um. But yeah, I think like I think this kind of a one has four megs, but not all of that would be usable. Like it depends. If you've just small images, yeah, you could um keep them there for sure. But if they were bigger, you know, if they were any way sizable, like if you're looking to store something like a meg image, you'd probably be better off using an SD card or whatever. If you want to, <laughs> if you're ever in the Ireland area, you can have any amount of SD cards because I bought loads of them and I haven't used a single one. Uh, sorry, SD card readers. Like, uh, I thought I would need to store configurations and stuff in SD card readers and or SD cards. Like, you know, if you wanted to persist some configuration for your project over time. Uh, um, yeah, it would... Uh, I'd need to do an SD card, but uh, no, you don't. <laughs> you um, Is that working? Yep. Uh, so you can see the boot there. The T isn't... Isn't perfect now, but uh, you know what might help you see a bit better is there's plastic on the screen. Wonder is that dulling it out at all? Not, not really. I don't think. Yeah, you can see it pretty clearly there. I think. Um, yeah. So that's booting. No, maybe we should make it flash. Why not? Um. So let's make it flash a pretty handy way. So bool uh, dots on equals false. So let's do display time takes in. I suppose if it's a global, it doesn't need to take it in. Uh, yeah, I'll pass it in anyways. Will I? Yeah, sure. Dots on. Mm, can't do that. Dots. That's visible. So let's do this. So what I'm going to do is someone had the suggestion about flicking the dots. So if dots are visible do this thing. If they're not, don't bother. So the dots will be off by default then. And uh, then what I'm just going to do is I'm going to pass in dots on into display time. And then afterwards, I'm going to say dots on is equal to not dots on. Um, so it already was only doing this every second. So now it will it should change the um, the dots every second. So if we go back to desk with chat with me, I'll just click the upload button. Um, if you go with an iPhone app, you could use config settings to let the phone send the offset. Uh, yeah, that's that's a good idea too. That you know the offset should be configurable by phone or whatever. This is still uh, uploading. Um, so what is this? Uh, uh, I suppose you could hotlink if you wanted to do graphics. Sorry, what's this? Um, the ESP Weather Station caches all the images into the built-in flash. That's the um, that's the one by Daniel Icorn or S Squicks, is it Squicks? Um, so that's done uploading, and I don't know if you can see it, but yep, it's flashing there. So yeah. It was an easy, easy feature to knock off the list. Um, yeah, I, I think maybe adding the like web page or whatever to set the, set the offset might be a little bit too much work for, what um, the amount of time that we've left in terms of how tired I am. <laughs> but um, you could figure out the epoch time of midnight and load and run the check against real time then at midnight to change the variable for daylight savings time real time and check against the real time what real 
time the clock like the real time module is it um wh what would you check against um i'm not too sure what you mean karen um okay so let's let's plug in this buzzer and get this working uh, so we're just gonna plug ground of this chip uh, can you see that okay I'll zoom me in a little bit more we're very focused on the wires at the moment let's try and adjust that a bit yeah well, I suppose I could probably bring it up here to be a uh, less in the way maybe okay so we're just bringing the ground up to the top uh, top bar and yeah so I'm gonna presume 5 volts is what I want for uh, the VCC of this thing and then I need something in for IO and I suppose I'll just use D one no real reason why just seems like a nice number and let me just plug in so I have the VCC up on this top bar and ground now I just need to connect it into the into the module uh, I have a few nice and small uh, nice and small jumper wires that would be perfect for this so let's make sure I plug VCC into. Oh, that's interesting. I don't know if I did that or not, but there is a there is something stuck in one of the one of the things there. Is there something in it? This one here, there's something in it. Yeah, I don't think you can see it on the camera, but oh, there, popped out. Just a bit of plastic. I don't know what it is. Um, yeah, can be off that. Who cares? Um, okay, so let's plug black into ground. And ground. I'm not really showing you what I'm doing here. Um, there. So let's just do a uh, just a test that this is working. I'll, I'll do a. I don't know. Void sound alarm. Let's define an alarm pin, I suppose. Hash define alarm. What did I put it on? D1. Um, yeah, sorry, I haven't been looking at the chat now in a minute, but I'll, I'll get to it in a second. I actually have not find a pin in so long that I nearly forget how to do it. Pin mode. Yes. Pin mode. Pin mode. Is it the arm is an output? That doesn't seem right, does it? Oh. That shows you how long it's been since I was doing stuff. Um, pin mode alarm output. Let me just check the things. Um, yeah, <laughs> I can build so many different loggers. Make me. Um, I was gonna say flashing colon looks good. Cool. Stop clock is right once a day or twice a day. Yeah. Maybe not a twenty-four hour clock, but a watch for sure. Yeah. Uh, is there an easy way to store a variable to ESP flash uh, slash EEPROM, meaning like a string? Um. 
yeah if you if you look at spiffs it's pretty pretty easy like you you wouldn't need to, if you just want to store one string variable you could just store that in a file um on its own you don't need to use json but spiffs is 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 pretty easy to use i'd, I'd recommend using that um the guy with the swiss accent is the uh the guy with the Swiss accent, Andreas Spice, uh, has a good video on spiffs. I'd recommend checking out. LGB Kai, we were actually talking about this earlier. Uh, there's no way of connecting an external antenna to like that module, but um, you can buy uh, it's a Wemos D1 Pro, and you can connect an external module or antenna to that. Um, I think you need to. Um, I think you need to solder something i think you need to move that uh it's kind of hard to see but there's a zero ohm resistor and i think you need to move that um come on slide yeah you can see it there you need to move that zero ohm resistor to the pad that's below it so move it from connecting from there to there to connect from there to there um which is probably no easy task but uh yep i have literally never used it <laughs> um but i have it there along with millions of other things from aliexpress uh okay so i have my alarm pin set as an output um i presume this is active high so i'm just gonna uh uh Digital right alarm uh, low. Um, so just if that pin just happens to be high or whatever, it'll turn it off. And then sound alarm will digital right high. I probably should have kept that low for a second. And we'll do a delay of second and we'll digital right low so i'm just gonna do this in um i'm just gonna do this in the oops in the setup just to see that it's working okay um yeah hey t uh, i never actually said hey to thirsty and sub ticks so hey t um yeah <laughs> maybe uh maybe people shouldn't watch my uh oops i've plugged it out uh Oh, sugar! I haven't been showing you my screen for the last I don't know how long. Um, I didn't really do a huge amount, anyways. Where am I? Uh, desktop. Um, so yeah, I defined pin mode alarm as an output. I defined uh, an alarm as D one, and digital writing it low, and then uh, uh then. Uh, thanks for the heads up, LGB guy. Um, and then, yeah, I'm sounding the alarm in the setup just to test that it's working. Um, <laughs> all right, uh, cool. So you're watching on Twitch and YouTube. Um, yeah. So, uh, like Sierra Lima Oscar was saying about the D1 Pro has four times the memory. Is there still issues using that with the Arduino IDE? When I first got it, that there was. I think you could only use the four megs, but maybe that's changed. So all I'm doing here is I'm writing that pin to be high, and then waiting a second and writing it low. So I just want to test that the that the thing works at all, um, because I, I actually don't know that it's uh, it's active low or whatever. It hasn't beeped at the moment, anyways. So that's probably a good thing. Let's see. Um, was there any other question? New to Expressive, uh, decided to focus on ESP32. Um, uh, Greg, have I looked at ESP32s? It's, it's this board, isn't it? Ooh, you can't see because my chat's in the way. Can't as well, that's Lowland32. See my name there. Uh, so I haven't done a huge amount with ESP thirty twos, but um, I am going to. So I, I have a 
I don't know if you know this. Where is that board? Um, yeah, so I was using that earlier. Um, I, I have a good few libraries for the ESP8266, mainly just like wrapping, um, wrapping API calls. Um, this is done uploading and I don't see anything on the screen. Okay, so this did not beep. D1 is going into IO. Maybe 3.3 volts isn't enough to drive it, or maybe it's not connected right. Let's uh, find that out. Um, the light board is newer. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, no, I got these a few months ago. Let's go to. Uh, desk plus chat I, I got the, them a few months ago and uh, at the time basically I tried like a couple of my libraries out on it and it didn't work and I was just like nah I'll just wait for it to get better <laughs> um, and also at the time like Bluetooth didn't work with the Arduino IDE and, and things like that so um, it seems like it's kind of getting there now so um, I actually uh, the Instagram library um, I fully tested on the ESP32, it works fine. I updated the, um, my Instructables API library to um, work with it as well, uh, the ESP32. So I'll, I'm going to start porting over libraries to the ESP32 and uh, maybe start using that. So I just want to test that. Okay, so I do not have. Yeah, I blame ye as much as I blame me. Her. Um. This is where I'm sourcing my five volts from. As you can see, I don't have anything else plugged into this. So, uh, yeah. Unsurprisingly, that did not work. Okay, so that's buzzing, right now. Buzzes a small bit louder when uh, when I had the thing set there, but uh, it is constantly buzzing. Maybe I'm using the wrong type of buzzer. Like it is the same kind of one I used in the. It's the same kind of one I used in the um, Zelda chest build, so it could be could be wrong. My other box of tricks. It's my motor one. We didn't even. I, I didn't even care about taking off the loom bands there. And, and this was a present of uh, Kieran and Gary. So I think that this one is more of just a regular buzzer. I'm not sure. Let's see. Let's try some of these things out. Anyways. The general, the consensus. Um, yeah, I think I mentioned that. If if you saw the the EEV blog video, I thought that maybe this would be the the year of the ESP. But uh, well, let's see. Uh, like it's funny you know like uh, a lot of people kind of go oh yeah like with the ESP32 coming out like that's the ESP8266 dead or whatever but oh I moved my uh, sorry uh, I don't know how I managed that I really should probably lock them down can I do that yeah okay cool sorry about that um, I can lock things down in OBS and I didn't know that um, so let's plug this in and see does this work. Remove seal after washing. Do I need to wash this? Hardly. Let's just plug it in and see what happens. And 
that did not buzz at all. Hmm. Interesting. Let's try this one. Don't really know what I'm doing with that one. That one worked fine. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, yeah, that's that's the thing. The USB eighty six six is still uh, is still very um, it's very capable. Like you know, is in there's a lot of projects I see people do. It's like, oh yeah, I'm using an USB thirty two, and it was like, yeah, you could have easily used an USB eighty two six six for this. You're not using anything USB thirty two e. Um, Oh, maybe that was what was wrong with the buzzer that was nearly silent while the seal was still on. That could be it, alright. This other one was nice and beepy though. Let's uh, have it plugged in right. Yeah, I think so. Let's see what it's like. Um, yeah, but yeah, I'm definitely going to do more ESP32 projects for sure. Um, I've kind of been thinking as well, I'm probably going to do less, just for the next couple of weeks or whatever, I'm going to do less sort of like big projects, like uh, say, like since I didn't release any videos in November or late November, I released a wedding lights video, like that was a big video in terms of time to edit and make and stuff like that and write up on Instructables, and then I also did one on uh, the the a tiny programmer which was kind of a, a long well it wasn't too long but it was kind of a it wasn't much of like coding in that project either and then like the next video was the zelda chest which was no coding whatsoever so i kind of haven't done a lot of development work and you know i haven't released any two minute tidbits in a while or anything like that so i think for the next couple of weeks i'm going to try focus on kind of getting the libraries in good shape and porting them to the USB 32 and uh, I'll probably um, uh, I probably will um, yeah so that didn't work that time either whatever's up with that I think um, I think make me was saying that they're th those buzzers don't work great with 3.3 volts um, so uh, yeah could be it so that's that'll be the alarm for this thing I'll have to see what that is exactly uh hsd so i think that's just sort of like a, a basic buzzer it's not passive um yeah so yeah probably do more of those kind of projects rather than kind of the big sort of makey projects more like do libraries or kind of info videos and stuff um so tomorrow i think i'm going to try do a really quick video on the instagram library um just like the first minute just showing you how to use it it's it's really simple and then like followed by how i did it because that's it's a small bit interesting i would say like i'm gonna give people the opportunity to hey if you just want to know how to use this library you're done here but uh just show you the different kind of things um yeah th does that part work on the usp32 where like y you can have one core to do something and the other core to do everything else uh, because that that would be that would be super useful to me because i'm thinking of loads of stuff where i could do with having a where i could do with having uh different stuff uh so shane i don't think you can change the voltage on the one i've plugged in uh but the this one, when it works, uh, I don't know why it's not working. I'll uh, take a look at that again. You can change the tone of it. So the Zelda Chess project had uh, had different tones in it. I, I don't know exactly how this worked or whatever, but uh, I think it was just the amount of time it played changed the tone of it. I don't know. 
yeah, so it's a delay in microseconds based on the tone. Yeah, so um, yeah, so that that did change the you know the the, the it played the tune from Zelda when you open the chest or whatever. So, but I, I didn't write uh, a line of this code. I basically just changed it so that uh, it played in the setup, and that, and that was it. Um, yeah, so. Yeah, like uh, one of the things I would like to make is um, is I made a subscriber counter before and use another um, social media stats uh, things as well, um, and I did it on one of those. Um, uh, what are these called? Uh, eight by eight uh, display matrix LED matrix. Um, 8x8 LED matrixes and uh, like so what I was doing was I was displaying like scrolling the number here and then stopping and then you know leaving it there because you, you can't scroll the number and fetch data from who are wherever at the same time that you need to be only doing one of those things at once but if you could handle the scrolling of the screen using one of the cores of the ESP32 and you could handle fetching the data from the API that'd be super nice and uh, that would be something I would definitely be interested in doing so actually you've given me uh, something to look into now uh, earlier there um, I, I can't remember if it's gone too far up uh, Drew was saying about the ESP Twitch bot yeah that's something I've definitely uh, I want to do as well. I, I looked into it a tiny bit uh, for like Twitch chat and stuff that uses IRC and there is some IRC libraries available that you can use for the ESP so it's potentially possible to like that you could have stuff that based on the Twitch like chat they could send commands to change change the color of the LEDs and, and stuff like that Um, I think it'd also be kind of cool to um, you know if you got a new follower you know the way some people that have like text show up on the screen or whatever like isn't followed or subscribed or whatever that like you know you'd have one of these things just kind of sitting in the corner somewhere and like have the text for that display up in here uh gary is a uv make your own uvb 76 uvb 76 Ooh, that's a buzzer nickname. Give oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Just plays that one tone over and over again. <laughs> Very good. Um, I'm poking at it now. Um, I don't know what you mean, Drew. <laughs> uh, LGBK, too many ESP options. I would I would start with an ESP8266. Uh, this is the Wemos D1 Mini. It's in link to it in the description. Uh, that's a really good place to start. They're simple to use and uh, quite nice, I would say. Um, and when you've gotten used to that or whatever, maybe then move on to a, a Wemos style board. But maybe there's a better one than this. Um, I think, yeah, somebody mentioned that there's the ESP. Uh, the lowland light or something is, is smaller or better shaped for a breadboard so it might be better so um yeah i think uh, i think i'll leave it at that guys uh, so that's about an hour and a half worth of streaming i'm pretty tired and uh yeah thanks thanks a lot for joining uh we'll continue this um alarm clock in the next um thing we'll set up a web interface for setting the different alarms and things like that um and yeah, think of whatever other cool features we can do now that we have a functioning alarm, buzzer, got a functioning clock, and yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I have banned myself from buying stuff, uh, Greg, on AliExpress for at least a month. Um, so... Yeah, I'll have to make do with uh, with this one. It does fit in the breadboard though, so that's that's not too bad at least. Um, 
yeah, just to make use of some of the crap I have in the house already, rather than buying more. Um, there, I, I still have a load of stuff to come from over Christmas, so there'll probably be another post bag whenever it happens. Um, uh, the yeah, we must. Uh, Brian, I want to ask you: Is there any way to send a voice message from mobile to Arduino, and from Arduino to my mobile? Um. Uh, somebody mentioned earlier about the um, MIT Maker app or MIT App Inventor or so. What was it called? MIT MIT App Inventor Two. You can send voice commands from. Um, you can send voice commands from that Bluetooth app. That's my my uh, multimeter turning off. Um, but uh, that's uh, that is uh, that's a way of sending voice from your phone to the thing. I don't know if there's any the other way around though. Um, Shane. Uh, or sorry, Sean. Um, I need advice to create an IR blaster that can listen to my commands. I have a similar board. Uh, Sean, if you look through my earlier videos, I have one about um, making a IR blaster. Um, let's take a quick look at that. Uh, desktop. So. Go to my channel. Um, where is it? So if you look at this one, ESP is a universal remote, and you just have to watch my ads. Apparently, <laughs> ads seem like a great idea until you uh, have to watch them yourself. Um, thanks everybody who joined. Uh, I'll I'll answer a couple more questions if people have it. Um, so this is a. Uh, this is an IR blaster. Um, do I have a picture of it here? Um, yeah, so it's just a simple IR blaster using a transistor and a infrared LED. And um, it had a, it has a web interface. Uh, you can see it. So let's just watch this video till we can skip it. I don't think uh, I don't think it counts as me like. So you can see over here, uh, let's make this a bit bigger. Uh, you can see here that I had a web interface for controlling it. And um, yeah, so you could, s uh, and how that was set up as well was this was making Ajax requests in the background. So when I clicked TV source, it was sending a request. Um, where is it? Uh, TV source was sending, uh, sending this, toggle source request in to the Arduino so it was listening on the on that end uh, on that endpoint so you could control that from wherever like is in if you if on my PC I went to the IP address of that uh, ESP8266 forward slash uh, um, toggle source that would uh, that would invoke this here so <laughs> view boosting yeah, I, I'm stealing uh, stealing my own views here. Um, yeah, so uh, this was actually, it's a pretty nice project, this one. I, I kind of meant to go back and do more with it. I thought, um, I thought it would be cool, that, like, if, if you kind of hooked it up with, you know, you can control an ESP8266 with Alexa and stuff, so you could be like, Alexa, turn PlayStation on or whatever. Um, I thought that'd be a kind of nice idea, but I never got around with it. Uh, yeah, so that web page is hosted directly on the ESP. But you could, if if you wanted to, you could create the web page to be hosted somewhere else, as long as it made requests to the ESP. So, like if if this ESP eight two six six was, you know, had the IP address ten, if I went to one nine two dot one six eight dot one dot ten forward slash TV power, it would hit here and, uh, you know, s send the IR command to, to press the power button on my, uh, on my remote. So yeah, it was a, that's a nice project. Uh, I'd recommend checking it out. Okay. Yeah. Let me throw it in the chat here. 
the video is pretty short. It's only two minutes fifty seconds, so it's probably worth uh, worth uh, checking out. I would say. Uh, link your GitHub in the description. Uh, <laughs> I just triggered your Alexa. Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah. So I will. I will. Um, after the stream ends, which is now basically, I'll throw the code I have up on GitHub, which will be a link to my GitHub then, and I'll put it in the description just in the next five minutes or so. Um, that's exactly what I was looking for of a cheap 15 RGB LED light bulb. Yeah, so in the video I kind of talk about like recording the um, recording the commands off my different remotes as well. So yeah, feel free to work away with that. Um, you know, it's a simple bootstrap website, but it's like it does the job. So uh, it's pretty okay. Okay, guys, uh, thanks a lot. I'll um, talk to you next week. So, yeah, probably Monday at 9.30 again, unless something else comes up. We'll continue on with this uh, project, and hopefully I'll have uh, a video, yeah, in the next couple of days on the Instagram uh, API. I was expecting Arduino to have published it by now, but they haven't, so I, I can probably still make the video anyways, but... um. Yeah. Okay. Thanks a lot. You're welcome, Sean. No problem. Okay. See you soon.